more fuel, more labor costs, time, and so forth. And um, if you charge, basically, the theory is if you charge everybody the same amount, some people are paying too much, <coughs> and some people aren't paying enough, because you're averaging it across all trips in the entire service area. So we've been, since that time, um, and I can't take, I can only take a small little portion of it, most of this goes to the staff. Um, but since that time, we've been working on figuring out how can we create a system that charges people according to how much they use. The more you use, the more you pay. The less you use, the less you pay. That's contentious issue, fairness. Um, the, problem, the problems have been mainly technical. Um, if you go to uh, Washington, D.C. or to San Francisco and you ride on the rapid transit trains there, those are all distance-based fares. In other words, the further you go, the more you pay. Um, and usually in both those systems, if you travel during uh, rush hour, you pay a little extra premium because you know the, the cars they have to put more cars on the trains and more expenses associated with rush hour travel than non-rush hour travel. So they charge a little bit extra for that, a little bit less if you're not traveling during rush hour. Well, that that works on a system like that because it's it's a, it's a um, controlled access system, right? You've got to go through the turnstile. You've got to swipe your card. Um, you can't really do that with a button, but you haven't been able to with a button until now. We are just on the cup of being able to do basically that same thing with our entire system. And what it involves is the, the electronic fare collection um, system that we've been kind of slowly rolling out, um, not throughout the uh, entire system, but through, well, it's through the entire system, but not all users are using it, but we've been slowly introducing that to our customer base. You take that electronic fare collection system and you combine it with the global positioning satellite um, system, the GPS vehicle mm -hmm. location system that we also have been rolling out, and you basically merge them. So when somebody gets on a bus with one location, they tap the electronic fare collection thing at the, uh, uh, as they get on the bus, and that marks where they are geographically. They travel to their destination and they tap when they get off. And it, what the, um, the data collection and the electronics allows the system to do is to calculate how far that person has traveled um, and to charge them based on how far they've traveled. One of the interesting things we've been able to figure out is we can do this in our, the our kind of current idea right now is to make um, this calculation based on as the code flies, not based on the route of the, of the uh, service that you'd be um, taking. So if the, you know, if the route goes you know, a little bit uh, out of, of direction or has a you know, sharp corner or something, you get charged as if you were we're going directly from point A to point B. And by the way, I just have to tell you, I've been observing, observing crows recently, and crows do not fly straight. <laughs> if you ever watch a crow fly, they don't fly straight. Geese, geese fly straight. So I'm, I'm, I'm the chairman of a campaign to change this thing. So I want you all to practice with me. Has to do the fly. Okay, has to do the fly. Okay, it's making much better. Um, so, we are, and, and I, I, there's no one, as you can tell, um, I'm, this is a kind of a cause for me, and you guys have been, yeah, yeah, this is a cause number, of, what, 452 for you? <laughs> he's, got, he's, got, he's got lots of causes. Um, I, there's no one who's more eager to pursue this and get this rolled out. Um, and figured out and implemented and on the street than me. But I also understand that there are lots of questions that still have to get uh, taken care of. Many of them technical, but a lot of them policy things um, and how it will actually work operationally and, and uh, to the benefit of everyone. We've had some uh, studies uh, done by consultants looking at a bunch of hypothetical situations, simulations of you know, possible ways this might work. And I, I don't want to, I'm going to use the numbers here, but I want you to understand that these numbers are just 
ballpark figures. There, and like I say, there are hypothetical situations. But in, in some of these scenarios, in some of these hypothetical situations, we are showing um, uh, expenses on a per mile basis um, in the 60 cent per uh, range or so, 60 to 65 cent range. Um, many of our riders, um, especially in Salt Lake City and the central part of the region, are riding, um, making trips that are under two miles in length. Um, and so um, even staying revenue neutral, in other words, without reducing the amount of revenue that the agency would receive, a lot of our riders would actually experience a fair reduction because they travel short distances. And so under this scenario, if they're traveling uh, um, two miles and it's 65 cents a mile, um, that's going to be a, a dollar thirty, and that's not a fair cut for us. It's still fair and neutral. We're still getting the same kind of revenue, but because we're only charging what people use, those who use less will actually experience um, a pretty substantial cut in what they actually pay um, for the fare. Now. Um, one of the couple of, of things have to be said right up front. Um, whatever system uh, that we come up with, we'll have the, um, the discounted fares that we have. Um, we'll have to translate those discounted fares into this new system. But the, the traditional discounts that we have uh, for senior and disabled, which are, by the way, manda uh, mandatory under federal law, of course, those will be going forward. But also the other ones that are non-mandatory are discretionary discounts, uh, like, for example, for low income. Uh, and our freedom access um, uh, programs, those will also be carried forward too. Translating those into the new system, you know, we, we still need to figure that out, but the, the idea is that those would also be reflected in the new, uh, new program. Um, we already are kind of doing this um, to, a, to a significant degree with our front runner system. If you ride, uh, ride the front runner train um, up to Ogden or back, you know, you, you pay according to how many stops you go, right? So that system is pretty much already in place. What would be new is that this base, same basic philosophy would be deployed system-wide for, for all of our services. Um, when will this happen? Not soon enough for me. But um, the um, IT people, the technology people at UTA are saying, they're trying to reduce my expectations because they know I get frustrated. Um, they're, they're telling me about two years. I'm hoping it's going to be less than that, and I'm, I'm trying to push for something sooner than a couple of years because I think it's important. Um, but you know, it, doing it right, of course, is mm -hmm. more important than doing it quickly and, and messing it up and then having to go back and fix it. So um, I, uh, I'll try to be patient. So that's that's the kind of a general idea. Um, one of the things that will that kind of, is it, implicated in this system, and I think it, this, is, this is one of those kind of, oh, I'm, I don't want to call it a thorny problem, but it is something to, to kind of work out, is uh, in order for this distance-based fare to be collected, you have to use an electronic medium, <laughs> an electronic car, um, because otherwise, you know, you can't calculate where you get on and where you get off. Um, and so I know that that's an issue that's of concern to some people, and I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'd be interested in hearing your views on that. <coughs> um, you know, one of the possible answers to that, or at least maybe a transition, you know, this, this, I mean, one of the things to think about is the possibility. This doesn't all have to happen at once. It's not like, you know, you know one day it's this way, and the next day the whole landscape has changed. One, one of the things we might want to look at is, uh, you know, having a kind of transition phase, and that's probably why, because that means we will have an opportunity to work out kinks that will in inevitably come, come to the fore. So maybe there's a point which we're doing, you know, uh, the electronic distance-based fare while we are doing other media, other um, uh, fair media as well. So that's something to figure out. Uh, I have a question for you. You have proposed a maximum fee and no matter how far people are in, they will not pay beyond the maximum fee. Uh, have you guys figured out what that's going to be? <coughs> that was one thing that was included in, in these um, scenarios, these hypotheticals we were talking about. We haven't proposed it, 
and I'm not sure. I, I know we haven't made a decision on that. That was just something that was, like I say, I mean, we, we hire consultants. We ask them, well, you know, try, try to create these imaginary worlds for us, yeah. and and, uh, and you know, give us a range of different policy options that can be tested. And that that was part of one of those policy options. Um, so, not, not even good for I think we, we're leaning towards uh, a, a mode. So bus would be a, a maximum track, maybe front runner. You know what I mean? But, but again, how much that is, no, we haven't. I and mean, the decision, I think, you know, discussions like this will help us make those decisions. Do you have any idea when you think you would come up with Yeah, when are we going to come up with this figure? <laughs> I'm going to look for the project manager. We're, we're having those sessions now trying to decide how to find if, if, we were, if we had a business pitch in some place, well, how would we price it? What would the cap be? Um, you know, what the local discount would be like? And we just don't have a good energy to look at. I know the question was when. Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think we'd like to. I mean, the, the board has given us some pretty specific goals as far as revenue and ridership and um, what the technology um, um, have to kind of catch up. We're, like you said, in getting, we're really um, kind of pioneering new ground in, in this. Uh, there are transit agencies like that have been mentioned in DC or, or San Francisco that do this, but they have their own cards. We're not using, you know, we have some cards, but you know, you can do this on your American Express or your Visa card now. I mean, it, it's really a new technology. So we're working on some of those answers, and you know, I, it's not that we're trying to hide any of it because we're really, I mean, we're looking at developing this along as, as we go along, and and we just don't have specific <coughs> answers at the moment. So here's a question because this is something I thought I had when I heard from I mean, I don't know if if you're designing this, would it be possible because you're using GPS? Let's say public city decided. We want to take money that we've been using to buy our employees and to maybe some other money and we'd like to pay for the entire city to be based there. Would that be, I mean, if they chose to spend money, could they negotiate that? Like, this is just a question because I had, I mean, this is, this is a very transit friendly city and um, it's something. I could imagine some people on council at least be interested in thinking about them, depending on what the numbers look like. Um, but I, I mean, it seems like it'd be better if the city can negotiate on behalf of the city employees would be interested in if they can negotiate on behalf of the president. Um, I, I, there's no technical reason why it couldn't. And, and so, and, and in terms of why we wouldn't be uh, interested in this stuff. Yeah, there's, there's no reason why that couldn't happen. I mean, I, you, the, the details mean a lot on something like that, but it, it was, um, it seems like that would be, I mean, that. I mean, when, once, once you create a system like this, you can customize it to, yeah. to fit any really policy. On um, um, red air days, um, when the air quality is oh, bad, yeah. we can adjust the fares, you know, that for those days, um, <coughs> you know, to, to create a, a, a additional incentive for people to leave their cars at home. I mean, there's a whole bunch of policy of, of Objectives that can be facilitated by the technology. So, and and the idea that you're doing things in dollar increments. I mean, in my at least mile increments. My fear when I heard this is that it would feel like you're getting on a cab, and every time you mile there's a click, there's a cab distance. It would be like the 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 goose that the cruise goes to the cab stop. Because because you know you get on at Salt Lake Central Station. Right. And you and you ride it, and you know you know you don't get to say I, it's faster for me to ride, you know, straight down Second South, you know, or to the Galvin Center Station, or whatever. I mean, if we track how you ride on tracks, you know, it's going to be further. It, you're really only going to be billed for just the distance, uh, you know, or ride the two you, whatever. But the the, the idea is that it's it's going to, you know, you can transfer to bus and all these things. It doesn't matter. You can ride in circles, but we're going to, you know, basically from point A to point B and, and what's the distance between the two. And so, you know, there will be, I think maybe what I hear you saying a little bit is, you know, will I know how much you're going to charge me? I, I think 
you know, we got to work through some of the messaging or you know how to understand a little bit about how much. But I think there is a daily maximum. Someone mentioned that you won't go. You'll be kind of promised we're not going to charge you over this amount, regardless how many, how often, how much you. Well, that's, you that's something that we were thinking about because we give out day passes right now, right. and we to largely the homeless clients on Monday right. and Wednesday mornings. And uh, yeah, we were thinking so. Do we have to buy people cards? Do we have to? How much money do we have to put? You know, and how is <coughs> we're going to continue that service? How I think you know that's another discussion I'd love to have with you because you know what what is it? are they a consistent clientele or are they different? I think there's probably a serve, little bit of both, right? We serve people. We provide that service to people up to six times in twelve months, and so it's um, I mean it's, it's we are willing to be. You know, we we just. It's, a, it's actually it's a small part of what we do, and it's not. Yeah, sure. I mean, but it's you know we we it's something we wonder about. Are all of you aware of the low income uh, path that we've been offering, and that, that's available through Department of Workforce Services? Or really, it could also be available here, frankly. But it's a. Is that where these take twenty percent off to somebody that's on well, uh, well, using so using the Horizon card? Yeah, you use the Horizon off. card, yeah. Um, but it, if you uh, qualify under any of the Department of Workforce Services programs other than unemployment, um, qualify for a low income monthly cap of $50. And so that's unlimited. Um, it doesn't include frontrunner service, so not the premium services that we offer like frontrunner express bus, but you, you, uh, you get a whole <coughs> monthly pass. And so um, we'd be interested, even if you know, you're interested in getting a pass outlet for those, say you run out of your pre passes for the, the homeless, the homeless service provider, but you know, those passes, but if, if they have some uh, source where they can contribute towards the $50 <coughs> uh, monthly pass, we'd, we'd want to, uh, you know, give like a And we would you have to, you know, I'm sure we'll have to, I mean, if this when this happens, we'll have to figure out what we that the low income is right now, but when we get into the distance space, certainly continue to have that conversation. That's why, I mean, I'm, I, as, as uh, Trustee Bartholomew said, uh, we're very excited, I know, but, uh, but um, <laughs> first time trustee, <laughs> second time trustee. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> but, <New York. laughs> but, 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 <laughs> but the idea is that we will, we want to continue having a conversation so we can help understand how this best work for um, this population as well as others. I have a question. Um, my concern is, and I'm wondering, how would everybody have access to these cards when there's a lot of people with bad credit, no credit? Um, I'm, I went through Chapter 7 bankruptcy seven years ago and I still can't get access. I have a debit card through my bank, but right. I can't get charge cards. And well, I, and, and I think the idea is to have multiple multiple Are media that would, would, that would work for this, so debit cards, okay. yeah, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, even too small, I'm, I'm thinking, and, and now I'm way off on thin ice here, but <laughs> I'm thinking, uh, they're going to they're gonna <laughs> poke me in the bit real quick here, um, that we need to have some sort of uh, additional card that's basically a, a, a transit debit card that, you know, you just go and, and, and you know, like a for, for five dollars, ten dollars, you buy a car. You know, it's like a car car. You know, for mm -hmm. uh, uh, I have one for uh, EV Metro, for example. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, every time I tap on and tap off, it tells me how much is on here. It's almost like a gift card. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, to, uh, to the grocery store or something. And then I know what I have as uh, a balance on here. And so you're right, um, Luann. We I've got one for you. <laughs> that my head picture of the president of it. <laughs> 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 the one. I do, I do. I'm very proud of you. Yeah, because people have too small of income to even get a debit card. Um, so we'd want to, we'd want to, our idea perhaps, I mean, again, this is one of those details you got to work out with, but there'd be like a, you know, an, uh, our candy vending machines or something, a way for you to get one of these and then, and then have a balance on it. Um, or, or you know, or, or, or vendors, you know, the stores and so forth. I mean, in, in, in Europe and lots of other parts of the world, they have, you know, um, uh, newspaper vendors, uh, salespeople, tobacconists. That's, that's where you buy it in Europe. You, the tobacco store, you know, the guy, you just look on the street and there, there's people sell tobacco over it. <laughs> we don't have that here. Probably we like but, food and cookies. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but, you know, to be able to make sure, this is going to be a big issue, to be able to make sure that these things 
things are easily, readily available for people in a variety of circumstances, yeah. in a variety of ways, <coughs> um, so that it, it doesn't become an issue or a barrier. How yeah. old is, oh, I'm I'm, sure. I'm, I'm, I lived in a town where they had zoned pricing, and in that case they had three, and then the further mm -hmm. out you would go, the more it was charged. Mm -hmm. And the way that they structured it was it was clearly delineated by colors and symbols. You may know which town I'm talking about. And it's Portland. And so you could tell exactly where the cutoff lines for where you're going were, and there was a certain amount charged. The monthly passes were purchased. You could buy a yearly pass, a monthly charge pass, or whatever, because you were buying for a zone. So you knew how much you were going to pay every time. And in this case, they spit out paper passes. But you could probably get the card the exact same way you're talking about, almost like one of these gift card things. Yeah. Um, but in the case of the disabled pass and that up there, they had one price for it, and it covered all the zones. It was just, that's just the way it works there. Uh, if you held the, um, they called it Honored Citizen Pass when mm -hmm. I lived up there, that's what they titled it as. But if you held that, it was just one price for wherever that person was going. And in that case, uh, you didn't get it out of the regular ticket machine like everybody else. You know, you <coughs> have to go through a different process and be certified to get it and get it from an office very specifically because it was a discounted pass, which I think is fine, but um, it worked really efficiently there. And just to have those really obvious zones of how much the cost was, your pass just kind of worked wherever you went. But people totally paid more where they went and you just expected it to be just nailed. We, we thought about doing a zone system like Portland. I, I actually lived in Portland for about 10 years. So then you know how great very, it was. Yeah, I'm yeah. very familiar mm -hmm. with the system. And it, it works better, that kind of a system works better when it really is a hub and spoke system where people really, it really is a commuter system to and from the downtown because that's the, that's the zone system, mm -hmm. concentric circles surrounding downtown. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't work so well enough, well, now I'm going to use, uh, we're going to get into perfection mode here. Um, in a, poly a polycentric metropolitan area, right. I, I mean, where you have a lot of different kind of mi um, mini downtowns right. and, and different hubs, and people, you know, and, and we have at least three of those, and people would argue there are more. You know, we've got people going in and out of downtown Ogden and in and out of downtown Salt Lake and in and out of downtown Provo, and so creating a set central zone system that's just based on Salt Lake mm -hmm. doesn't really kind of fit our system. Because our central station is not exactly central now. Um, oh, sorry to point that out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in addition, <laughs> when we add the airport line, I think that that will actually possibly pull that into a little bit more of a concentric city in that model that you're talking about. Urban well, to some model. extent, but you know, um, Ogden and Provo are doing pretty well. They and, are. And, and they're growing. I think she um, did make a point, though. And I think the point that she made was that the consumer in that particular area knew what to expect. And I think one of the profile from what I've just heard of brief, uh, what I've just, from what I've just heard, the consumer's not going to know what they're being charged. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, that, so I think that that what you're suggesting line. is the challenge that we need to we need to answer. I, I would agree with you. I don't want to give you free access. I don't want to give you TA, and I work there, access to my debit card to just building whatever, sure. you know, at the end of the day. And That's so I think you're absolutely right. So, so <laughs> what I hear, whether it's zone or or whatever it is, we, we need to be able, you need to be able to know how much it's going to cost you to go from point A to point B, mm, yeah. and, and we need to be able to give you the idea. So mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that. I think that's excellent. Thank you. Um, how exactly we're going to do that, I don't know. I that's would love to participate if there's another yeah. opportunity. You could work on um, something. You could, at the very least, you. you could work something about a price computer fair into a route finder. Oh, absolutely. That's a route finder. Yeah. Yes, I'm right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that way people, I mean, and, of course. you know, people who call to get directions could also call to get a price. Because um, I, think, yeah. I think actually the uncertainty mm -hmm. factor is going to be yeah. higher yeah. Yeah. at the beginning. Because yeah. people tend to ride use transit, but to go to the same places. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, Doug actually had his hand up first. I'll just explain a minute. I have been reading in the newspapers that the people, and I've also been reading letters to the editor, that people are saying that due to the price hikes, people are going to drive their cars in the buses. And ride the buses. Well, that's always a possibility. And, it, and it's true, people respond to price. And so when the price mm -hmm. transit goes up, people tend to shy away from it. But you know what? What? When the price of gasoline goes up. That's true. And that has a bigger effect. Right. And as, as gas prices have been going up, we've been seeing our ridership levels go up too. So it's pretty substantial. The other thing too is, I know this is getting a little off the subject, but uh, these uh, 25 cent fuel surcharges, why can't, uh, instead of UPA, Sticking the 25 cent surcharge on us low income people, why can't the company uh, uh, pay the surcharge? Yeah. Mm. With the, the oil company. <laughs> 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 I, I, I think the oil company is not as good. We have to charge that. By the way, if you aren't charged, so if, if you do have a low income pass, you are held harmless against Facebook and Google and Apple and so forth. Yeah. 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 You know, obviously, freedom access. If you have a pair of terms of qualified, you're not. Um, and then, oh, I think I mean, no. that you are. But I, but I would agree with you. Okay. I like, I like uh, Keith's idea of, of Exxon and mobile. Yeah. Well, why do we think of that? <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I was thinking is that the, what I was intending is that John English makes so much money that he. And he can pay the bill to our dinner with his own pocket. He might have worked. Well, I'll ask him about that. That's good. Yeah, that's good okay. Um, your, um, your idea about uh, doing something with the fairs on Red Air Days fits right into a suggestion that was a couple of suggestions made from my agency, Colleague Community Action Program. Um, doing free fares on Red Air Days or limiting it to one dollar on Red Air Days. And also, I'm I'm intrigued by what you were saying with the zone fares, uh, like she was mentioning in Portland, because in Washington, D.C., they have distance-based fares, and when you click in at the station or whatever, it tells you how much you have left on the card and how much it's going to be to to get to your place. And I so I'm wondering why why we can't adopt something like that because they have very disparate downtowns and places and hubs like we do. Well, um, um, there's no reason that. I and it was explained to me why we couldn't. So, you know, right now we have a card reader. Can you, can you tap? You know, right. it, you know it, it says there's a mm -hmm. little meter there. Mm -hmm. I don't know that there's, and he, Jerry's not going to tell me to do it. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it seems like that could be programmed so that you could, it would tell you right then and there mm -hmm. what, what the fare is. So it's not going to be a mystery, at least when you get off. Right. The, I think the point that's been made before mm -hmm. is that you want to be able to anticipate ahead of time. What, what the cost is going to be, and that um, mm -hmm. you talked about a couple of ways to do that, but I think we need to support Well, it seems like you could do some PR before you a lot of PR yeah. before Here's you roll out this saying this is so it's easier for you, so you don't have to carry extra change or whatever. And then in, in other languages, because I know I had a call from a person at UTA who wanted input on um, how to get to people with limited English proficiency, and I'm thinking right. something in mm -hmm. Spanish or you know. Well, Spanish, well, English, and then um, maybe some other designated languages. Somali. Uh, I mean, we have a lot of people from a lot yeah. of different places around yeah, the world. Right? Big refugee communities here. Yes, yeah, but so Spanish and English, Spanish for sure. Yeah, that's no great. I think we need to probably go beyond that too. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. you, you first. Okay, I have a question that has to do with uh, tracks from some time ago back. They first put in track, there's two things that happened. First of all, 
Let's take it straight. People voted against it and still came on in. My complaint was, let me go to Monroe, which is a whole lot better rather than the fact because of that. But then this is the big thing. They said they weren't going to raise their prices any more than 50 cents. And since then, I think dry tracks has gone a whole lot more. So I'm asking you why they raised their prices when they said they wouldn't. Um, well, I wasn't here when they said they wouldn't, so I can't tell you what they were thinking. Um, and it's because um, I know the way of um, inflation and the way of uh, energy costs. Um, and, uh, yeah, but they were going to do it. Well, they, they, didn't, they, they, no. they did not raise the price to the, in the first. With the, they did not. But they, they did not raise the price when the tracks opened up. They, they did not. I mean, it was no, not. No, no, it, it was not something. It was at least. It was a few years before, and after it went open, a bit before they. <coughs> but they still raised the price. Oh. There's no way they would have promised to never raise prices again. I mean, they. they that, that would have happened. They, but um, I, 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 I think it was really. It, it was at least two or three years after they they did that that they started to raise. Yeah, and it, you know, and actually, it wouldn't make any sense to raise prices with uh, just for tracks because actually tracks save the money in labor costs. I mean, there was the, the cost to provide a mile of service on tracks is lower than the cost to provide uh, provide a mile of service on a bus. Mm -hmm. So um, it's actually it, it, it can become much more efficient. So. The cost of the agency for moving that same rider at you know same distance goes down with track versus bus. So how much does it cost for a track? It's the same. It's two point five. That that was my question. You're talking about the sixty cents per mile and the maximum <coughs> fare, and I was. But then you said there there would be a different fare rate for tracks over the bus. Well, this is another thing that we have to figure out. Because